happen. And we're live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Wrestling with Trivia. I am your host for today, Steve Mesa, former Wrestling with Trivia champion. But this is not about me. This is about my, the competitors going to this event. But before we go into the event, let's do a little catch up, a little rewind for a little bit. Last episode you saw, it was a matchup between Corey C4 versus Kevin. And after a tight, tight battle, it was Kevin pulling up the upset. Some may say the upset of the century over a former champion. Because he's already racked up two wins against former champions, Corey C4 and Jordan Owens. So he's on the verge of getting a future title shot. But that is if possibly has one person in front of him, and that would be uh, a person that we'll be able to talk about a little later down the line. But before we catch up, we got our top five rankings. Here's our top five rankings for today. So for this episode, currently at number five with a record of three and three, we have Corey C4. At number four, right above him, just slightly with the same record, three and three, but with a win advantage and a title win to save something about that. That would be Mr. Jordan Owens with three and three at number four. Number three is a potential opponent for the aforementioned Kevin. We have Romeo at number three with two to zero. Two to zero wins. And number two, sitting on top of the position with a possible number one contender spot open with two zero against two wins against two former champions. That would be Kevin, but sitting on top of the world, the current reigning, defending, undisputed wrestling with trivia champion, Mr. 4 and 0, Dexter Beckett. Gentlemen, what do you think of, of the news that, that we have an undefeated champion who's going in to his potential match with a, a, a foe who's uh, overthrew the former champions? It's possibly a, a good chance that he might overthrow this champion. Well, first of all, I have a problem with these rankings. The fact that Romeo is higher than me. Quality of opponent should be considered, not just simply wins. So I, I need to talk to management and figure out how this ranking makes a sense. Talk to the PWA. Well, he has, okay, the re, he, he's undefeated, unlike some of us here in this. Yeah, but that, that's like that's like judging, you know, Shawn Michaels versus, you know, uh, a new guy that's just squashing local jobbers. Like, it's not fair. Like, come on, I'm just saying. I got to go quality of opponent as well. Oh, tr dude, trust, trust me. If I, if I was being fair, I, I would put it above, I would have put me above you, even though obviously you have a better record than I do. But that's my fault. Uh, all right, so with the news out of the way, let's start with – Question number one. This is a whole mix. Did introduce us? Did we get an introduction? Oh, Jesus Christ. We're already getting into it. No, yeah, no introduction because I didn't mention Toller. We already mentioned the aforementioned Mr. Jordan Owens, the former Wrestling with Trivia champion. He hails from Naples, Florida. Uh, any words before we go into this matchup? Uh, just, you know, as my good friend John once said, never give up. And Justin, I love you like a brother. But tonight, just like Owen and Brett, I'm going to have to take you out at the opener of WrestleMania 94. Uh, well, and his, I, op his opponent, he is Mr. Justin Toller. He is walking into this arena at an amazing, outstanding record of one and two. I don't know how amazing and outstanding that is, but I'm going to try my best tonight to put Jordans in the uh, grave tonight. Well, you got to win over a handful that's of violent. people in the league, so you, you're, you're at least have, you at least have a win. So that's so. saying much. That's not, not saying much, but anyways, moving on. We're going to go to question number one. What type of item did Roddy Piper hit Jimmy Snuka on an episode of Piper's Pit? Start, starting off with an easy one. His trusted sledgehammer. All right. Let's start with Mr. Owens over here. You put the lime in the coconut. Mr. Toller. Coconut. That is correct. It is a coconut, but I would have also accepted a belt. He did, he did technically hit him with a belt after he smashed him in the face with a coconut. So I would have taken belt, but obviously coconut is the infamous answer. 
Number two, who did Kevin Owens pin to win the WWE Universal Championship? Who did he pin to win his first and only Universal Championship? This is for you, Cousin Kev. It looks like Mr. Owens is ready. Is Mr. Toller ready? Yes. All right, Mr. Toller, what do you got? Uh, Seth Rollins. Mr. Owens. I agree, Mr. Burn It Down, Seth Rollins. It is Mr. Seth freaking Rollins. That is correct, gentlemen. It is the architect. He pinned him in a fatal four-way on an ep on the two weeks, I believe, the two weeks after the SummerSlam when Finn Balor got his uh, shoulder dinged up. I believe that's correct. That's why I'm the trivia master over here. Uh, number three, who did Mr. Perfect face at WrestleMania 740 WWF Intercontinental Championship? Well, okay, Mr. Perfect, why do you run to that very quickly? Who did Mr. Perfect face at WrestleMania 7 for the WWF Intercontinental Championship? This was 1991 in Los Angeles, California. It was supposed to be at the Los Angeles Moore Stadium, but, uh, you know, terrorism. I have a, guess, a strong guess. All right, let's start with Mr. Mr. Owens. What is uh, your guess? The, I hope it's the man who shares a birthday with me. Big boss man? Mr. Toller. Uh, Bret Hart. Unfortunately... You are incorrect, Mr. Toller. It is Big Boss, man. It is a gentleman who shares Mr. Owen's birthday. And Jordan picks up the one-point lead. Us and Savio Vega, for those paying attention at home. August 10th. Heard I, that. I think so. Still anybody's chances here. We're still going into question number four. Speaking of Mr. Perfect, here's a segue. Who did Mr. Perfect manage in his second to last run in WWF? Who did Mr. Perfect manage in his second to last run in WWF? That would be around the year 1996. Okay. Mr. Toller, do you have an answer? Triple H. Mr. Owens. It's all about the game and how you play it. It is one Mr. Triple H. It is one Mr. Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Both gentlemen have scored a point on after round number, question number four. Number five, what was the name of the tag team featuring Rocky Romero and Trent Beretta? What was the name of the tag team featuring Rocky Romero and Trent Beretta? Ah, uh, yes. Took me a second. And I'm semi-confident Teller doesn't know. I could be wrong. <laughs> is that incorrect sir do you do you mr toller do you know i know zero about <laughs> this question all right mr owens let's start with you Ropongi vice mr toller i have no answer it is Rapungi. Rapungi. Rapungi vice it is that is correct mr owens has one point and Sorry, it stands for, what does account. it stand for, Steve? What does Roppongi mean? That's a city in uh, Tokyo, Japan, sir. Oh, good, because I didn't know. <laughs> Always All right. What is the name of the wrestlers that comprise the team of Roppongi 3K? <laughs> Are you going to be really picky on spelling? We'll see. Okay, because I just I'm off by maybe a letter, but I'm pretty sure, and I'm even more sure Teller does not have it, because <laughs> this is even more obscure. All right, okay. Mr. Toller, what do you have? No answer. <laughs> Nothing. Not even a guess. No, sir. Uh, Mr. Owens. Show and yo. I'm not gonna be picky with the spelling, but it is show and yo. That is correct. Another point for Mr. Owens. Thank you, you, New Japan. 
This is how you run a New Japan trivia contest. I'm just saying. But oh. moving, on to number six, moving on to number seven. Moving the on to number seven. Is still there. He lost someone earlier. Just so you know the background of that joke. Heard this that. Number seven. Which deceased wrestler was known as the first Black Tiger? Which deceased wrestler was known as the first Black Tiger? Obviously, here's a hint. He's no longer with us. Mother, yeah, I know what deceased means. <laughs> it's like how, how like making the jokes that you always make in the background. It's like, oh, it's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you, you sold it well. I thought you were legitimately thought you were helping us. You sold it very well. It I means know, he passed. It means he no longer wrestles. It means he ain't here. <laughs> All right, Mr. Owens. I know it's wrong, but I can only think of Eddie Guerrero. Mr. Toller. Um, I actually didn't come up with an answer on that one. So you, you want more? Th you want five more seconds? <laughs> no, because I already gave my answer. No, no. no. <laughs> it, is, it is not he, Black Tiger 2. It is yeah. Eddie Guerrero. But Black Tiger 1 was a Rollerball Mark Rocco. Rollerball yeah. Mark Rocco. Yeah, because anybody would know that. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, if you were, if, if he died last week, so I mean, if you're into wrestling. Really? That's, I don't even remember hearing that. Yeah. yeah. Point being. <laughs> point being, point being, none of you got it. Uh, number eight. Who did the Young Bucks team up with to face Bandito, Ray Phoenix, and Ray Mysterio in the main event of All In? Who did the Young Bucks team up with to face Bandito, Ray Phoenix, and Ray Mysterio in the main event of All In? Why do I suck at all elite trivia? Jesus, I love the company. I guess you're not all elite. I'm, I'm not. I'm not elite. Not not elite. Uh, one more time, give me the opponents. His opponents were Bandito. Ray Phoenix, and Ray Mysterio. Last match of All In. Technically, they weren't all elite at that time. Ooh, looks, like, looks like Toller might have an answer. <laughs> Toller's struggling here on this, on this one. All right, I have something. Toller, do you have an answer? Um, no. No be quite answer. Do you, do you want to pass? Do you want to think about it for a few seconds since Owens hasn't put up its answer yet, or no? You just want to pass. Just pass. I right, Mr. Owens, not, you're not missing any points. I went with tugboat. <laughs> no, it was not Tugboat. It's a very good guess. It was Mr. Kota Ibushi, the Golden Star. I just, I'm not, I know it's a cruiserweight. I'm just not, it just was not coming to me. Was not coming to me. All right. Number nine. We still got Mr. Owens at six, Mr. Toller at three. Still anybody's game at this point. Number nine. Who are the current Ring of Honor tag team champions? Oh, okay. It's like Mr. Toller has an answer. Let's say Mr. Owens has an answer. Sure. Mr. Toller, what do you got? I'm just going to go with a guess. I'm going to say the Briscoes. Mr. Owens. Uh, is it Jonathan Gresham and my good friend Jay Lethal? That is correct. It is Mr. Lethal, Mr. Gresham. Yeah. One point to Mr. Owens with a seven to three lead. All right. Number 10, living on the prayer, halfway there. Who did Mr. Mean Gene Oakland pin to win his first match teaming up with Hulk Hogan? Who did Mean Gene Oakland pin to win his first match Teaming with Hulk Hogan. This is a Mr. Owens is unsure of his answer from the, guess. Look of guess. the shaking. <laughs> Mr. Toller struggling, looking at his pen. 
Give me just a few moments. No, you're good. Take your time. Give me a few moments. Yeah, yeah. Take your time. Five, no worries. Four, I'm three, just com- three, I'm just commentating five. on what no, I No, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. Thank you very much. I can't I can't just keep it very silent, otherwise it'd be just very awkward. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And this a lot of this little, you know, this talk gives us a little bit of an extension going on, even though I kind of have to kind of close that extension as we speak right now. Right. Just like Mr. Toller has finalized his answer. Mr. Toller, yes. what do you got? I went with Heenan. Mr. Owens, what do you got? If we're right, we're right. If we're wrong, we're wrong. Bobby Heenan. You were both wrong. It is Mr. <laughs> Fuji. Mr. Fuji. Mr. Well, the Fuji. Right track, in a way. Oh, Mr. wow. Mr. Fuji, yes. Wow. Mr. Fuji, he was, they were teaming, uh, it was M- M- Morocco and Fuji versus uh, Hogan and, and uh, Okerlund. I uh, remember the enough. montage video of training, if that helps. <laughs> yeah, they, say- that's, that's, what, that's what they were training for, for that match. Right, right. Uh, okay. Oh, by the way, 4-0 Mr. Okerlund in the ring, 4-0, undefeated. That's a great he's, record. He's the real Goldberg. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to the land of the rising sun, gentlemen, Japan. Going back to Japan here. <laughs> Which wrestler who has passed who passed away in 2005 had feuds in all Japan and Noah with competitors like Kenta Kobashi and Toshiaka Kawada? I got a strongest guess, but uh, spelling, trust me, spelling won't count. Say 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 like the people again. All right. Wrestler who passed away in 2005 had great feuds in All Japan Wrestling and Noah Wrestling with competitors like Kobashi and Kawada. All right. Eh. Well, no, I just I wrote down a name and I was like, wait, did I write down the name you just said? <laughs> Which would obviously be wrong. <laughs> oh, Kobashi feud with Kobashi. We're not talking about Bullet Club Kenta. No. Talk about the real Kenta. All right. This uh, looks like Toller has resigned himself for a little bit. But Mr. Owens, what do you got? Mitsuharo Masawa. Toller, you got anything? Ooh, I did not. I actually said uh, Dr. Death, Steve Williams. Uh, yeah, he is deceased, uh, maybe not in 2005, but it is Masawa. That is correct. Yeah. Now, when you said Williams, I was like, oh, that, I thought that might fit. It's around that era, no? It's around that era, but unfortunately, he didn't live past to see, uh, or did he? Yeah, he, I don't think he was in Noah, so he wasn't in Noah. Okay, sure. Uh, eight to three, Jordan in the lead. Number 12, who was known as the protege of Bruno San Martino? Uh, who was known as the protege of Bruno San Martino, the living legend, to be Hall of Famer for the class of 2013. All right, let's start with Mr. Toller. Mr. Toller, what do you have? Larry Zabisco. Mr. Owens, what do you have? You might say this is wrong, but I say this is right. David San Martino. Tell me he ain't a protege. <laughs> I'm going to say no. That is not the answer I'm looking for. That is his son. I'm looking for Larry Zabisco. It is correct. Mr. Toller gets that point. Yes. Catching yeah, up slowly. Sorry. I would say who's the son Who is the son of Bruno San Martino? But he's be- also, I'm sure he was a protege. Only his dad no, taught him some shit. Uh, no, Larry Zabisco was promoted as the protege for Bruno okay, San Martino. Okay, okay. He had that match. Then he beat the crap out of them, and then they had that other match. Well, how did All you right. spell Zabisco, Toller? Close, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. He, spelled, he spelled it enough where he put down the right answer. I'm joking. <laughs> All right. Number 13. You, this is literally a 50-50 shot here for number 13. Which Hardy Boy made their debut first at Ring of Honor? Oh, well, I know that answer, so... All right. Mr. Owens. Uh, I believe it was like 2003. It was Jeff against Kirby Mack and somebody else in a three-way. Mr. Toller. Damn it. That is correct. It is Jeff. 
But he faced Joey Matthews and Crazy K in 2003. There we go. Joey Matthews. And yeah, Kirk, Crazy K, Kirby Mack. Cool. Number it was not well received. He got booed, actually. Yeah, he did. Now, get, if I, if yeah. I can ask a question, that was uh, during his the first time he was. Uh, this is that first TNA run, too. Yeah, like 03. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 04, 03. I had no idea that he went to, TNA, or, uh, to ROH. Just that once. That's why it's kind of like an obscure right. trivia fact. Right. Cool. Because Matt had a real run. Yeah. The more you know. <laughs> uh, number 14. What was the name of the Hardys promotion before they arrived in the WWF? I think we both know this because we were just looking at something on the network. <laughs> or maybe he wasn't paying attention. I can't tell. All right, Mr. Toller, what do you got? Omega. Mr. Owens. It was uh, Kenny Omega's promotion, Omega. That is correct. It was Kenny Omega. The, the, the real that question is should correct. be, uh, isn't there like an ac isn't this an acronym? It is an acronym. Yeah, that should be the question. <laughs> I would. I don't know. Oh the yeah, answer. yeah. Cause I want. I want because I would like to. Yeah, because I like to make it harder than it is, right? <laughs> Maybe it's a future question. You never know. Uh, number fifteen. Yeah. Which wrestler appeared on an episode of season two of The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs to host a viewing of Bloodsucking Freaks? The GA stands for Grappling Arts, I think, in Omega. For this question, <laughs> uh, I know what you're talking about, too. A lot of people like that show. Or I have friends that like that show. Uh... Uh, one more time, please. Yes. Yeah. Which wrestler appeared on an episode of season two of The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs? To host a viewing of blood sucking freaks. Here's a hint. He's a former world champion. Do you know what? Can I ask what year this would have came out? Sure. This year. Oh, it's, it's really recent. I knew it was recent. I know that was that recent. Okay. Season two, 2020. <laughs> okay, I have a guess. This actually might be right. I don't know. Ready, Mr. Toller? Or are you still yeah. thinking? No, I'm good. All right, I don't Mr. know if the is good, but I'm good. All right, Mr. Owens, what do you got? I went with David Arquette. <laughs> Mr. Toller, what do you got? Uh, CM Punk. It was actually La Champion, Chris Jericho. That makes sense. Punk was a good, good guess. Jericho's makes sense. All right. All right. Question number 16. Who did Junkyard Dog beat to win the WWF Wrestling Classic Tournament in 1985? Oh, son of a... I even asked this question, but my question was just simply, who won the tournament? Son of a B. That's why <laughs> hey, that I, I turned those questions you asked. No, I know. I, I just feel like I feel so bad because I, I, I talked about this exact match. Who did um, Junkyard Dog beat to win the WWF Wrestling Classic Tournament in 1985? Mr. Owens doing his best Tilo Brown there. All right, wow, that actually gave me, gave me a headache. All right, All right Mr. Toller, Mr. Toller, what do you have? Uh, shot in the dark, say honky tonk man. Mr. Owens. Oh yeah, dig it, macho. That is correct. Yes, Ooh, macho man, Randy Savage. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pulled it out of my ass. Oh. Put it on your ass. I'm like, I'm like a lot of things that come from your ass. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's a G-rated show, Steve. Calm down. You said you said the A word first before I did. Yeah, but it's just like the F word. We get away, we get away with one. Now we're PG-13. I didn't say the F word. Did not say the F word. Freaks. Look, sucking freaks. Oh, yeah. All up. right. Number 17. Who is the first WWE superstar? To become the quickest man to cash in money in the bank. I think I can. Here's a hint. It's not Thomas the Engine. Ah, or wasn't he trying to trick me? Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Owens. Was it uh, the Big Red Machine Kane? Mr. Toller. Kane. It, it's gotta be. It's gotta be. It's gotta be Kane. Yeah, that is correct. It is same Kane. night, right? Same night. 
Same night. That is correct. Meeting one Mr. 619, Ray Mysterio. It was literally like an hour and a half later. Poor Ray. That is correct. All right. Jordan Owens, 12. Mr. Toller, 7. Oof. Number 18. What type of match did 123 Kid and Razor Ramon compete in at In Your House 6, Rage in a Cage? I think I know that. I know what you're talking about. I think I have the name of it right. What type of match did Once and Three Kid and Razor Ramon compete in at In Your House Six? Rage in a Cage. All right, Mr. Toller, do you have an answer? Uh, I don't. You do not. So you want to pass? Yes, I'm passing. Mr. Owens. Is it the infamous crybaby match? That is correct. It is the infamous crybaby match. Yes, the match. Can't forget him in a diaper. Exactly. <laughs> putting him in a sleeper hold and then putting a diaper on him and putting the, uh, the, the, the powder on his, bot on his bottom tights. Yeah, he left, he left uh, in good graces at WWF, that, that six pack there. Uh, number eight, number 19. No wonder he got into drugs. First, they make him a diaper, the dips him, he fires him while he's injured. Man, I can understand him now. <laughs> All right. Mr. Owens is at 14. Mr. Toller is at 7. Still in anybody's game at this point. Uh, second to last question here. Who was the first ever Triple Crown winner in the WWF? Who is the first ever – what was the first ever Triple Crown winner in the WWF? Oh, I keep changing my answer. <laughs> At least I never thought about this. Who won the heavyweight championship, the intercontinental championship, and tag team championship? Not within the same calendar year, though. Unlike another question that I was given. All right. Mr. Toller, do you have an answer? Oh... No, pass. Pass, Mr. Owens. Uh, I started with Sean, and I said no, and I was thinking Diesel, and I was like, no, final answer, Bret Hart. Incorrect. It was Pedro Morales. Pedro huh. Morales. Way off. All right. Wow. Yeah, it's unknown. Nobody knows. It's Yeah, it's common mistake. It's usually Shawn Michaels. But before that, it was Bret Hart. And before that was Pedro Morales. I think because what Sean won the European, so they, they I feel like they they advertise that a lot. Right, like, he was, he was grand 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 I think Sean grand was the Grand yeah, Slam. That would be the yeah. Grand Slam champion. Yeah, that's why that pops up in my mind right away, Sean. And then I went, well, no, wait, Brett did it. But the first Triple Crown was Mr. No, I got you. I got you. All right, just making sure I'm not tricking anybody here. No, no, no. no. I'm just saying what my train thought of because I remember they, I don't know, they seemed to hype that a lot. But then I was like, yeah, like you said, it was Grand, not not Triple. All right. All right. All right. We are on the top of the hill. We are on question 20 here. Number 20, last question of the night. Which hip-hop group remade Taz's theme on WWF Forcible Entry soundtrack? Which hip-hop group remade Taz's theme on WWF Forcible, soundtrack, Forcible Entry soundtrack? I got one group in mind, but they probably did something else. I don't know. I got an idea. Mr. Owens has an idea, and Mr. Toller still seems to sort of struggle with the question that I've just asked right now. I'm struggling, too. I just went with something that I know they did something with the company. Was it this? Probably not. <laughs> any guesses? Any any concerns? Any any hopes? Probably, probably before the fall? Nope. Go with the Wu. The Wu Tang. The RZA. The Giza. The ODB. Yep, I have. I'm gonna have to pass on this one as well. I threw a guess out there just to at least give something. Run DMC. Uh, Run DMC did do it. That was, but that was for D Generation X. I thought so. The group was Cypress Hill. Mm. Cypress Hill, basically uh, a sequel to <laughs> Rock. Uh, <laughs> uh, Want to be a rock superstar, basically. You know, I heard from a good reliable source that they're insane in the membrane. So. Yes, insane in the membrane, and 
and they don't like to joke around about that either. Uh, so after a very hard and tumultuous question, it's Mr. Jordan Owens with the win at 14 to Mr. Toller's seven. So that brings Mr. Jordan to a four to three record still and surpassing Mr. Corey C4. I really surpassing him. But still holding on to the number four ranking. He has yet to face Mr. Romeo and yet has to face Mr. Dexter and yet has not defeated Mr. Kevin. But Mr. Toller, you have put on a tremendous fight. Even if halfway there, we tried it. It was an uphill battle, but appreciate you participating in this as much as you can. You did what you yeah. could. So, uh, any any last any last words? Ah, uh, started off strong, <laughs> turned into a failure halfway through. But I'm coming back for you, Jo. What you calling me out, Nucka? <laughs> what is a Nucka? I don't know. Oh, okay, heard that. <laughs> all right, so we're going to have a future Mr. Owens, Mr. Toller match, uh, all New Japan questions. So we'll go set that up and <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I'll give like, like seven out of 10, yeah, seven be, out of 20. Um, that'd be enough. All, all Japan questions, NOAA, all women's uh, stardom, all that. You know, we're going to just, it would just stack the deck against Toller here because apparently uh, Japanese wrestling is a little bit of a, a, a oversight, we could say. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. For not just goodbye. You asked Toller some you parting words. Say your last words. I said last words, gentlemen, and you just no. You, you just said Toller, off. tremendous job, uh, uphill battle, blah blah blah. Like you had a whole spiel, and then you're like, "Well, we're done." Well, anyway, just... <laughs> okay. Oh no! Oh my God! Here we go, uh, Mr. Owens. You have sitting currently at the number four position with four and three. You're still below Mr. Romeo, Mr. Kevin, Mr. Dexter. Yes, yeah, stop um, repeating yourself. Give, give me the mic now. Give, uh, give me do the you, mic. Hey, hey, do you have any last words? Do you have any any words for your future opponents? Thank you. Let me take the mic now. Uh, okay, first of all, the ranking system is messed up. I'll, I'll squash Romeo any day you want. I mean, I, if he even makes it into, within a 10-point mark of me, I'd be surprised. Uh, uh, Kevin, you got lucky. I was one point off. Steve had wacky tiebreakers. What can I say? Again, he screwed me. Uh, just like in the rankings. Uh, Dexter, uh, you're good, but someday you're going to get this toppled and it's going to be me. Uh, Toller, I love you. Maybe we'll hang out soon. Steve, you're fired. Until I need you, which is going to be probably soon. Yeah, probably, probably soon. I'm always the back of utility person here. Always a utility man, just like I'm always at down here in South Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for Wrestling with Trivids. On behalf of Mr. Toller and Mr. Owens, this has been Mr. Mesa. So I bid you a good night and a goodbye. Have a good one. Thank you, Kenny Omega 2.0.